All right, so the last um, section of peak was pretty strong. Uh, a lot of emotions going on uh, inside Peak's, you know, heart. I mean, and on top of that, the what you know, climbing Mount Everest. Um, so let's go over a couple of words. Uh, so we're gonna hear pneumonia, which is an infection in one or both lungs. Um, you know, it seems like it causes inflammation in the air sacs in your lungs. Um, so that's obviously something that people don't want, especially up on Everest. Um, reluctantly, kind of being hesitant about something, not really w willing to do it. Uh, astrology is the study of how the positions of the stars and movements of the planets influence things that are going on on Earth or with, pe you know, with people. Um, meteorology is obviously the, um, the study of what is going on with the atmosphere. The weather helps us with the weather, right? Um, when we hear the word hammered, it's going to be basically, it's referring to like things that are messed up. So something that got really hammered, something that got really torn up. Uh, oblivious, not aware, or concerned about what is happening around. I like to be just unaware of what's going on. Uh, outfit, uh, out, we're going to hear the word outfitted. We know that outfit is, you know, a set of clothes, but outfitted is like you were given, to be given uh, equipment or to be provided with the equipment. And then shackled, which we know um, is, you know, to be chained, to have chains on them, to be restrained with chains. Just so that you're aware, he, we are now in his second notebook. Remember in the last chapter, he sends out his notebook to his mom. He sends out that moleskin to his mom so that she would read it. So instead of giving her a letter, um, like she did for Paul and Patrice and, and Rolf, she, he um, ended up sending the moleskin as his letter to his mom. All right, secrets. The meeting was secret, held at HQ after the other climbers had all gone to sleep. By invitation only, Josh, the film crew, Sparky, Dr. Krieger, Thaddeus Bowen, and Zopa, who had brought Sanjo with him. Sanjo looked a little better, but not much. Josh glared at him, and I thought for a moment he was going to ask him to leave, but he let it go. Where's Holly? No one seemed to know. We're not waiting, Josh said. He turned to Dr. Krieger. How's Peak's health? I think we might have gotten the infection with the antibiotics. As long as it doesn't migrate to his lungs, he should be fine. There were three new cases of pneumonia reported in camp today. I suspect it's a secondary infection from the virus. William Blade is one of them. Everyone in his team is sick. They left this afternoon and we quarantined everything they left at their campsite. The news about William Blade and her former entourage was going to please Holly to no end. Josh turned to Zopa. Can Peek make it to the top? I was still seriously annoyed with Josh over the letters, and this was not helping. I hate it when people talk about me as if I'm not there. Zopa shrugged. We will have to see how he does at Camp 4. He was fine at ABC. I wasn't fine at ABC, but I appreciated him saying, him saying so. Thanks for getting him up to ABC, Josh said. I suppose you'll be heading back to Kathmandu. Zopa gave him another shrug. What about Holly, Josh asked. She's strong, Zopa said. Josh looked a little surprised. I was too. She was fine when she finally got to ABC and on the way down, but I wouldn't have or characterized her climb as strong. What was Zopa up to? It won't hurt us to get Holly to the summit, Thaddea said. She'll talk and write about it for the rest of her life. Good PR for peak experience, which means good publicity. I suppose you're right, Josh reluctantly agreed. He pulled a notebook out of his pocket and flipped through the pages. Okay, we have 10 people to get to the top, counting Peak and Holly. Out of those six or seven, have a decent chance if they hit the weather window right. He looked at Sparky. Do you have some dates for me yet? I'm looking at the week of May 25th through June 4th. Sparky looked over at Zopa. But astrology might give us a better idea than meteorology. Any ideas, Zopa? Josh asked. 
Zopa shook his head. I just look up at the sky. This got a laugh from everyone, but I don't think Zopa meant it to be funny. If your weather prediction is right, Josh said to Sparky, that doesn't give us much time. He walked to the calendar on the wall. Peak's birthday is six weeks from today. That gives us about five weeks to get him into position for a summit attempt, and I'd like to get him up there earlier than that. I agree, Thaddea said. If something happens and Pete can't get to the summit, we might have a, sec a chance for a second try. Thaddeus, there won't be a second chance, Josh said. Pete either makes it on the first try or he doesn't. Josh was right. Second tries were virtually unheard of on Everest. If you fail, you have to return to base camp. There's not enough oxygen at the other camps to get your strength back and recover. It takes three days to get back to base camp with a night at Camp 6 and a night at ABC, five days at base camp, longer if you're really hammered, then back up, which can take eight or nine days. Altogether, nearly three weeks. It would be mid-June before I could make another attempt, long after my 15th birthday. Climbers have been stopped 100 yards from the summit by weather, exhaustion, or time. And I have never made another, and have never made another attempt as long as they lived. Here's what I'm thinking, Josh continued. There's a couple signed up to go to camp four, but they're strong enough to go a lot higher. In fact, they have a better chance of getting to the summit than most of the others on the team. If we put them on the two scratch permits, it would increase our summit percentage by at least 20%. Did you talk to them? Thaddeus asked. Yeah, but no promises. I wanted to discuss our options first. I think you should send Sunjo to the summit, Holly said, startling all of us. Uncharacteristically, she had slipped into the tent quietly. Who? Josh asked, annoyed. Zopa's grandson, Holly answered. This sure got everyone's attention. We stared at Sanjo and Zopa with our mouths hanging open. I think my mouth was a little more than others. Was open a little more than others, than the others. Josh looked like he had been slapped in the face. Why hadn't Sanjo told me that Zopa was his grandfather? Sanjo sat with his chin cupped in his hands, seemingly oblivious to our shock. What's your father's name? Josh asked him. His name was Kitar Sherpa, Sanjo answered. I knew him, Josh said quietly. I didn't know he had a son. He looked over at Zopa and gave him his trademark grin. What are you up to? Zopa answered with a shrug. None of us believed him. There was a lot more to this than Josh, Sanjo, and Zopa were letting on. Josh looked back at Sanjo. How old are you? I'm 14 years old, he answered. I think we had just gotten to the main reason Zopa had agreed to leave the Indrayani temple and take me to base camp. Josh was no longer grinning, nor was anyone else, especially me. I considered Sanjo a friend. He must have known about a summit attempt back in Kathmandu. He certainly knew that Zopa was his grandfather. I should have guessed something was up when Zopa outfitted him in my climbing gear. Holly clearly had been let in on the secret, which might explain why Zopa had all but carried her up to ABC. When is your birthday? Josh asked. Sanjo looked at Zopa, who gave him a nod. May 31st, six days before my birthday. Josh was visibly relieved, but only for a second. How do we know that? Thaddeus asked. Sanjo reached into the pocket of his, my, parka, and produced a tattered piece of paper sealed in a Ziploc plastic bag. He pulled out the paper and handed it to Thaddeus. This is in Nepalese, Thaddeus said. Josh took it from him and read it over. No, it's Tibetan, he corrected, then looked back at Sanjo. You were born in Tibet? Yes, sir, S 
Sanjo answered. I was five when my father managed to get my mother and me across the border into Nepal. I am a free Tibetan. There is no such thing, Josh said. How did you get back into Tibet? You certainly didn't use this. He handed the piece of paper back. Forged documents, Zopa said. Josh swore. Well, your grandson isn't going to be a free Tibetan for long if Captain Sheck finds out about the bogus papers, Josh said. They'll arrest him. You'll probably be hauled away too. This explains Sanjo's disappearing act whenever the soldiers were around. A summit attempt is worth the risk, Zopa commented. Josh looked at Sanjo for a moment, then back at Zopa. I owe you, Zopa, but I haven't decided if Sanjo's getting a shot at the top. And besides, we don't have enough climbing Sherpas to get three teams to the top. And that's what we're talking about. Three separate teams. Yogi and Yash, Sopa said. Josh laughed and shook his head. You had this all figured out before you left Kathmandu, didn't you? Zopa didn't answer, but it was clear he had. Maybe you and I should go someplace a little more private to talk about this, Josh suggested. That is up to you, Zopa said, but I don't mind speaking about it here. Suit yourself. Josh looked at everyone in turn, but lingered when he got to Holly. This is totally off the record. Nothing we say here is to leave this tent, and I mean ever. If the Chinese get wind of this, they could shut down our expedition, but worse, they might grab Sanjo and put him in prison. Put him in prison. I thought of the Shackled Road gang we had passed after we crossed the Friendship Bridge and gave an involuntary shudder. I was mad at Sanjo, but I didn't wish that on anyone. Being arrested in the U.S. was nothing like being arrested in Tibet. I looked at him. He seemed worried, almost as if it had just dawned on him what would happen if Captain Sheck caught him with false papers. Everyone nodded in agreement, although I think the film crew would have loved to have their cameras rolling. Not that Josh would let them use any of the footage in the final documentary. Sanjo's mother was born in a small village on this side of the mountain, Zopa explained. My son met her on an expedition. It took him years to get her and Sanjo out of Tibet into Nepal. Sanjo is both Tibetan and Nepalese. The Chinese won't see it that way if Sanjo gets caught up here, Jar said. If we put him on the summit, they'll never give us a climbing permit for the north side again, Thaddeus shouted. That could take away half our business. The Tibet route is harder than the Nepal route. It has more prestige. By bringing Sanjo here, you've jeopardized our entire season. And for what? If Peek and Sanjo make it to the top, Sanjo still won't be the youngest to reach the summit. But he would be the youngest free Tibetan to summit. Sopa pointed out. It's a matter of national pride. We're in business, Daddy said, not politics. What's the difference? Zopa said. Enough, Josh said. He looked over at JR. How's the filming going? Okay, JR answered. We have some decent climbing sequences, a couple of good interviews. I cringed a little hearing this. He couldn't be talking about the interviews with me. Any footage? Uh, of Sanjo? A lot. He and Peek have been climbing together. What are you thinking? Yeah, Thaddeus added a little belligerently. What are you thinking? I'm not sure yet, Josh said. He looked over at me. How do you feel about sharing the glory? You've got to be kidding me, Thaddeus said. Josh ignored him. What do you think, Peek? I wasn't doing this for the glory. Or was I? I looked over at Sanjo and Zopa. They were both stone-faced. I was furious with both of them, Sanjo more than Zopa, because Zopa never told anybody anything. I wanted to tell Josh to send Sanjo packing back to Nepal, but instead, without much enthusiasm, I said, it's okay with me. Can I talk to you, Josh? Thaddeus asked. Alone? Sure. After they left, everyone sat there for a few moments without saying anything. JR finally broke the silence. Poker? 
He pulled a deck of cards out of his parka. Might as well, Sparky said. Josh and Thaddeus could be a while. I'm in, Holly said. I walked over to where Sanjo and Zopo were sitting. Thank you for supporting me, Sanjo said. You should have told me. I did, Sanjo said, glancing at Zopa guiltily, at least indirectly. What are you talking about? Our first night at ABC, he answered. I talked about how if we, get, if we got up to Camp 4, we had a good chance at the summit. He was right about it being indirect. I barely remembered the one-sided conversation. That's pretty lame, I said. Zopa came to his defense. Sanjo did not know in Kathmandu, he said. He thought I was taking him here to become a Sherpa. It wasn't until we were on our way up to ABC that I had told him about the summit. So Josh and I weren't the only ones Zopa played cagey with. I glanced over at the poker game, which was in full swing with a pile of money in the center of the table. They were lucky Zopa wasn't playing. I'm going over to the mess tent for some tea, Zopa said. I waited until I was, he was out of the tent, then asked Sanjo why he hadn't told me that Zopa was his grandfather. Zopa thought it best if we kept that to ourselves, he answered. If Zopa asked me to keep something to myself, I probably would have, would have too but it still bothered me that Sanjo didn't tell me. Zopa returned with a thermos of tea and several mugs. I took my mug over and watched them play poker. I wasn't really interested in the game, but I didn't want to hang with Zopa and Sanjo. Holly won every hand, much to everyone's annoyance. About 20 minutes later, Josh and Thaddeus came back into HQ. At first I thought Thaddeus had gotten his way because he was all smiles. Sanjo noticed his expression, too, and looked disappointed. All right, Thaddeus said, smiling at Sanjo and Zopa. You've got your shot at the summit. You're all heading back up to ABC the day after tomorrow, Josh added. The film crew groaned. All right, guys, so obviously this is a little shocking. We just found out the connection between Sanjo and Zopa. Um, they're related, right? And we just found out that, uh, you know, it's, it's got to be crushing for Peak because it's it, this is supposed to be his friend. This is the closest person that's there um, with him near his age. And can you imagine all of a sudden you found out that your closest friend in this new place that you've never been with, been in, um, you know, has kept a secret from you. And clearly Sanjo felt guilty because he was kind of trying to tell him, but he couldn't really tell him the truth yet, right? Um, and not only that, but Sanjo's in a dangerous situation. He's right now in an area where he can be arrested because he's not there legally. Um, and that puts him in danger of being, of ending up like the people that were um, chained um, at the beginning of the story. So, uh, sorry, of the novel. So it's a lot, it's a lot going on. Um, all right, go ahead and fill out your Google Forms.